Kendall? Hi. <laughs> so you're down to the last day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Test is tomorrow, or is it? Yeah. Um, it is tomorrow. I have my last three finals tomorrow. Okay. And math is included, so. Oh, nobody <laughs> has school on Friday, is that correct? Yes. Friday is for anyone who needs to make up any finals because they missed. So. Okay. So Friday is available for maybe the snow day makeup, huh? Yeah. Some of the teachers, um, some finals were supposed to be done on Tuesday because some teachers had more than one to do, but a lot of them just cut that final and aren't counting it. So. Huh. Okay. Well, I had seven hours of tutoring yesterday, and I had a ton of documents sent to me. So I'm <laughs> not sure which one we left off on. Uh, so I work back. It was. It was that one. We left off on this one? Yeah, it was, um, I don't remember what problem we left on specifically, but it was that one. Okay, so I guess this is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And how far did we get on this page? Hmm. Um, let's see, where did we leave off? I think we left off on six. Okay. So let's go to seven. Okay. Well, let's look at six. Okay. Um, find the equation. Well, I was looking at five. We're going to have to do five to continue on at all. Uh, okay. Do you remember the equation of the line BG? Uh, the line BG was... I can figure it out really easily. Okay. Let's do it. Let's figure it out. You tell me how to figure out the equation of that one. So, to find... Equation. So wouldn't that be x? Um, no, it would be y sub 2 plus y sub 1. Well, first of all, let's talk about what we're talking about. Are you talking okay. about <laughs> slope? If you're talking yeah. about slope, yes, that is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So in this case, what is that? Um, what's the equation or what is uh, it? What's the slope? I need, oh. in other words, the equation is going to be y equals some mx plus b. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing we need to solve for is m, and then we need to solve for b, and then we'll have the equation of the line. So okay. let's solve for m first. What is slope of this line, bg? So 19 minus 6 minus negative 6. That is 25. And then 3 minus negative 2 equals 5. Okay. So the slope is 5. Mm-hmm. And so I now can do what? What? Uh, uh, I, would, I would rather it if I didn't say anything at all. You tell me what to do next. Okay. So then you take the equation y equals mx plus b. And then m is 5, so y equals 5x plus b. And then you can do 19 for y equals 5 times 3 plus b. Okay, so what's b? So then that would be 15 and 
It would be 4. So what's the equation of the line? So y equals m at 5x plus 4. Okay, good. So that's the equation of the line BG. Okay. And that was really good that you were able to do that. Now we can go on to e question 6. Which equation okay. is perpendicular to BG? Which of the following or which of the three that you see there is perpendicular to the, what I have circled? So if it's perpendicular doesn't mean it means that the number has to be negative instead of positive there's two things you have to do to find the perpendicular okay and remember that because the biggest mistake I see from students is they only do one of them you always okay. have to do two things always a hundred percent of the time you have to flip it in other words, take the reciprocal, and you have to change its sign. Okay. And I'm talking about the slope. Okay. So what is the slope of our line here? Uh, the slope is 5. What is the slope of the perpendicular line? Wouldn't that be negative 5? No, you only did one thing, right? Okay. <laughs> you always have to do two things. If you're not doing two things, you're doing it wrong. Okay. So what's the second thing you have to do? Um, you have to do two things. You have to change its sign, and you have yeah. to flip it. You have to, in other words, flipping it means find the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of five? Here. One? No. Let me put <laughs> one under it. Okay. In other words, five is the same as five over one. Okay. Now flip that. So then it would be one over five. And now change its sign. To a negative. There's your slope of the perpendicular. Oh, okay. That's Which good. answer do we need on number six? Uh, that would be B. Correct. And that's all there is to it. In other words, it's very simple. You have to do two things to find the slope of the perpendicular. Always two things, not one thing. You have to flip it, and you have to change the sign. So if I had okay. a slope of two-sevenths, tell me the slope of the perpendicular. Uh, seven over two or seven twos. <laughs> How many things have I done? Uh, just one. So that cannot be the right answer. Okay. You have to do two things. What's the other thing? Um. Change um, its sign. Okay. I'm going to have to remember that. <laughs> That's huge. In other words, when you're talking slopes, and you're going to be talking slopes throughout the math of the rest of your life, slope, oddly enough, slope is one of the most important things in all of math. It's hard to understand okay. why, but it is. So parallel slopes and perpendicular slopes are huge. You absolutely have to know them. Okay? So... To get the perpendicular slope, just remember you have to do two things. You can't do one thing only. You can't just flip it. You can't just change its sign. You have to do both of them. Okay. Okay. How about number seven? Which equation is parallel? Now, here's our equation. Y equals 5X plus 4. What's the slope of a line that's going to be parallel to this line? So 
So if I have two lines and they're parallel, mm -hmm. what's true about their slopes? Um, that they're the, they're equal. Yeah, no matter what the lines look like. I can have one line looking like that and one line looking like that. And if they're parallel, they have the same slope. Okay. If they are perpendicular, then they have the negative reciprocal slope. That's the only two things that they're ever going to ask you about is parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Anything else is neither. Okay. Okay. So just remember, parallel is the same slope. Perpendicular is the negative reciprocal. Okay. So what is the equation that has the same slope as our BG of the three choices there? Um, okay. Seven. So, I don't know if you, there you go. Now you can see it. Which of those three equations has the same slope as B? Yeah, okay. G. Line segment, BG. So, you'd have to find the reciprocal, right? No, that's perpendicular. For okay, par so for for parallel, we're just looking for equal. Parallel okay. is a lot easier. Parallel, you just have to find the slope that's the same. Okay. So, which one of those, A, B, or C, has the same slope? as our line. Well, A kind of does, except 4 is a negative. Now, hold on. The slope <laughs> is the coefficient of the x term. It has nothing to do with the constant term. Okay. So, that would be C? Yeah. You don't care about this plus 1. You only care about which of these equations has a slope of 5. Well, okay. they're all in y equal mx plus b format. So the only thing we have to consider is the m. Well, that's an m of 1 fifth. That's not it. That's an m of negative 1 fifth. That's not it. That's the perpendicular slope. And that's an m of 5. That's the same as our m here. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Um, I think we should stay on some of these a little bit longer. Just to get... In other words, this is such an important point. Not just for geometry, but for algebra. That I'm sure you'll have to face this question many times in your test and in the future. Yeah. So, what relationship do A, B, and C, E have? Okay. They're either so, parallel, they're perpendicular, or they're neither. That's the only three possibilities they could have. Now, what do we have to do before we can answer that question? For, here, let me well, draw yeah. the points out. Here's A. Here's B. And they're comparing it to C E. So C is three comma minus seven and E is six comma minus five. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. Happy. Find the slopes of yeah, each? Yeah, that's, you got it. The slope of each line. That's the most okay. important part. We really don't care about whether they're, uh, what the y-intercept is. If we can figure out the slope of each of these lines, A, B, and C, E, then we'll know whether they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. It is only dependent on slope. 
has nothing to do with the y-intercept. Okay. So what's the slope of AB? So... Let's write it like this. I'm going to say AB sub M. That means the slope of AB. Okay. So then you'd have to do negative 6 minus negative 4. Okay. We'll go ahead and write it like that. We'll let you simplify it later. Go ahead. Okay. And then negative 2 minus 1. Okay. Now simplify that. So negative 6 minus negative 4 is negative 2. Okay. And then negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Okay. Simplify it further. Um, can you simplify it further? Yeah, we got a negative divided by a negative. What does that become? So, uh... Positive. Oh, okay. So negative divided positive. by negative is positive. So negative 2 over negative 3 is positive 2 thirds. So that's okay. the slope of AB. So I'm going to erase all of this, and I'm going to put 2 thirds there. And now we want to compare it with CE. So what's okay. the slope of CE? So you would do negative 5 minus negative 7, and then 3 minus 6. Oh, you went the so, opposite direction. Cannot, uh, 6 minus not <laughs> go the opposite direction. It doesn't matter which direction you go, but go the same direction on top and bottom. Okay. In other words, I could have done negative 7 minus a negative 5 and then 3 minus 6 if I wanted. But mm -hmm. you didn't do that. You started there and then you subtracted that, which means the bottom has to start there. Okay. Is that equal? Uh, y is... 2 and then x is 3. Okay, so what? how do these two lines compare? Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? They're parallel. Good. Let's do at least one more. Okay. Before we go on. Um, so Let's see. That was A, B, and C, E. So let's compare A, B, and A, C. We don't, okay. have, to do, so, we don't have to do A, B anymore because we, we already have it. Yeah. So let's figure out A, C. So B... AC is 1 and negative 4, and then C is 3. Give me, so, give me every step that I'll, I'll write. So you have negative 7 minus negative 4, and then you have... 3 minus 1. Okay. Simplify. So that would be negative 3. And then 2. And that's the same. In other words, when you have a negative sign in either the numerator or the denominator, I can put it out front like that. Same thing. Okay doesn't matter whether the negative sign is in the numerator, the denominator, or out front. It means exactly the same thing. Okay. So the slope of AB is 2 thirds. The slope of AC is minus 3 halves. What is their relationship? Are they parallel, per perpendicular, or neither? Uh, perpendicular. Very good. Okay.
I feel like you got that down. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. And we can come back and do 9, 10, and 11 if you want. But okay. I don't. I feel like you understand it. Let's go on to harder stuff or different stuff. Okay. Um, let's do this proof. Proof's baby. What's the baby? What's the baby for? <laughs> <laughs> That's just your teacher being fun. Yeah, I don't really know who makes the worksheet. So. <laughs> Probably because everybody hates proofs, huh? Yeah. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that, that everybody hates proofs. All right. I'll try to write concisely. It looks like you've done most of it. Is this your sheet that you sent me? Yeah, that is mine. So I have got, the proof done. It looks like you've got the first row. Yeah, and then second row, and then there is a third row, too. So there are actually four rows. Never mind. Must be another <laughs> page, maybe? I, I'm at the bottom of this page. Okay, I think I only sent the top part. Okay. Let me see if I can figure out the rest of it. That's a good test. <laughs> so we have MN equals PQ congruent, and MQ is congruent to N or PN. What does that make that figure? What is it called? Um, the fact that opposite sides are congruent to one another. Parallelogram? Correct. And they want us to prove that angle N is equal to angle Q. Okay. Okay. So, conceptually, what do we need to show? Well, what most likely, let's work backwards. In other words, if I want to prove that N is equal to Q, what am I going to have to prove first? Or not first, but right before that. Mm. I think that's the easiest way to do these proofs, to be honest. Okay. It all has to do with congruency, right? Yeah. So if I could prove this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then I could say that angle N was equal to angle Q. Okay. Okay. So I have to prove congruency. That's my goal. Okay. Well, they've told me this side is equal to that side, and this side is equal to that side. Tell yeah. me, tell me the four different ways that we can prove congruency. Um, side angle side. What are the other three? Uh, side angle side wouldn't it be S S S? So side side side. That's another way. Um, side is it? That, side, side, that actually no, does not work. Yeah. That is not a <laughs> proof of congruency. So there's only two proofs that have two S's in them. The other two okay. have two A's in them. So A, S, A. Okay. That's one of them. And then A, A, S. That's the other one. So those are the only four things we can use. Okay. Now, what two do we know? Um, you know N and Q? We know side side. Okay. In other words, this hash mark being equal to that hash mark means we have a side that's congruent. This hash mark being equal to that hash mark means we have a second side that is congruent. So we have one of these two situations going on. We know mm -hmm. we, have, we start out with two sides. So to prove congruency, we need either an angle or another side, the third side. Can you prove? 
any angles are equal. Okay. Can you? So, With everything they've given you here, can you show that any angles are equal to another angle? In other words, if we're going to use this one, we need to find an angle. Okay. So if we're going to use this one, we need to find the third side. Mm -hmm. And those are our only two choices. So I think you're, you can find an, an angle that's... Actually not. No, you can't? No. Okay. If I knew that was parallel to this, then I could say that angle is the same as that angle. But okay. They, they didn't say that. They did not tell us. There's no parallel signs. There's no parallel marks. There's no parallel statements. However, what is the third side of the triangle for both triangles? In other words, that's one side. That's mm -hmm. congruent to that side. That's the second side. That's congruent to that side. Well, where's the third side? Uh, the mid segment. How does that compare between the two triangles? Um, because it's the base of each one. It's the same. Okay. Yeah, you you said it. I would say that it is um, common to both triangles. But what that means is that MP is equal to MP because of the reflexive property. In other words, that's what the, that, that statement says right there, is that MP is congruent to MP, right? Are you looking at the yeah. number? Okay. And it's because the reflexive property says that anything is equal to itself. Well, you need to make that statement because we need to find three sides that are congruent. We're going to prove this congruency based on that right there. Okay. You see where there's three sides now? I do. <laughs> so line 14 would be that triangle is congruent to that triangle. And the reason is side, side, side. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and 15 is going to be angle N is congruent to angle Q, and the reason is going to be C, P, C, T, C. Yep. <laughs> so you had actually already done this completely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's all right. It's still worth going through proofs just because they're tough. Yeah, I'm not really good at them. <laughs> well, I've never met a single student in seven years that liked proofs. I didn't like them when I took geometry. I've never met anybody that liked them. And here's <laughs> the funny thing is you'll never have to do them again. <laughs> so after geometry, we don't have to do them? Never. Not for the okay. ACT test, not for the SAT test, not for your to get into college, not to get into engineering school, not to get into graduate school. Great, because I never want to see them again. They are only required in the first semester of geometry. Why they do that, I have no idea, because it's the toughest of all geometry. Yeah. Why they? It's like teaching somebody how to ski by dropping them on the expert slope. You would... <laughs> We never do that. I would, if I'm going to teach somebody how to ski, I'm going to start them out on the beginner slope. So yeah. I don't know why they start geometry off with proofs, but they do. And who am I to question it? So uh, anyway, uh, proofs can be different. In other words, this is not a hard proof. Why? Yeah. Is, why is this easier than most? Um, well, it only has four steps, and then they're all just kind of right in front of you. Well, At least that's give you one of the thing. columns, right? Yeah. In other words, if they ask you to do this proof without giving you anything at all, it might be tough. 
Yeah, and but they I don't fill think... out. They fill out either the reason or the statement for every row, and yeah, they... that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I don't think they've ever given us one where it's not filled out at all. So okay, and, <laughs> we at least and there, have some that are there's done. another type that I saw just this week where your test is going to be multiple choice. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it is multiple choice. So we well, do them on these Scantron things. Here's a two-column proof where the answers are multiple choice answers, which is interesting. Yeah. I've never seen this kind before. Um, in other words, they go through, they give you the given. They give you the two-column proof, but they want you to figure out what reason number three is. And reason mm -hmm. number three is question 22. Well, question 22 is a multiple-choice question. So you don't have to come up with the reason for number three. You just have to find it amongst these five choices. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that's going to make it easier or harder. No, no, it'll make it easier, trust me. In other words, they've told us that E is a bisector of BD. Okay? Okay. So now they're saying, well, that means that BE is equal to ED, right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to 22. Which reason is it? Um, if B, B e is equal to E, D, Y. Mm. That doesn't work. Um. Go through each answer. It wouldn't be an angle bisector. Correct. It's not an angle. Correct. Segment. Well, it it'd be the segment bisector. Right. You? Exactly. In other words, you don't have to come up with it. You just have to pick it out of a choice of five. Yeah. So that's number twenty-two is C. That is the definition of a segment bisector is that it splits the line up into two equal parts. And if this line is split up into two equal parts, then BE is equal to ED. Mm -hmm. So of all of the two-column proofs I've ever seen, this is the simplest. Okay. <laughs> In other words, having multiple choice. And you can probably figure out why. Not only do they give you at least the statement or the reason for every row. Uh, no, they don't. Number four, row number four, they make you answer both the statement and the reason. And yeah. that's a little tough. So um, that requires a little bit of deductive reasoning. You, all, you have to look at statement five to figure out how to do statement four and reason four. Okay. But mm, if you say you've never seen this before, um, let's not go through that logic because that's a little bit lengthy and we're, we're limited on time, I think. Yeah. And we can always go back to that problem if you want. Uh, okay. I probably need you to tell me where to go next. In other words, we've done this problem. Mm -hmm. We've done this page, final review number one. Now, I have all kinds of geometry pages here. Okay. I think that's the same one. That's the same page. Yeah. Uh, let me just back through each of these, and you tell me if there's any page here that looks unfamiliar. That's probably a good thing if it looks unfamiliar or if it looks like problems that you know are part of your review package that you need to do. Okay. Um, I actually think we did this I page. think we did this page, too. I have done this page with every single 
student whether they're honors or not. <laughs> it's weird because honors classes don't seem to be that far off of the regular. No, I, noticed, so. I noticed that. How about this page right here? Hold on, let me see. That's that page. Yeah. How about this page right here? This is actually from a student that's not at Chatfield, and it's oh. considerably different. Um, yeah. I, I worked with this student for two hours yesterday, and I was kind of amazed at how different all of his problems were. So yeah, it may depends or may on not, the school. This may or may not be a good page for you to do. Um, and all three of these are his problems, so let's look at this page here. Yeah, this is from Chatfield. Final review number four. I um, I have this page, but I don't think we worked on it. Okay. Unless you have something specific you want to go to, let's do this page. Actually, wait. We did the top part, but we didn't go to the bottom part. Okay, tell me where to begin. Okay, um, let's start on six. Okay. First of all, real quickly, tell me what the midpoint is on five. Uh, the midpoint on five, so you would subtract. No. Don't subtract anything. Okay. You add, you add the two coordinates and divide by two. That's how you find so, it. Negative three plus three is zero. Okay. That's zero. And then eight plus zero is eight. So then you divide that by two and that would be four. Correct. So so the midpoint is four comma zero. Okay. Even you still have to divide that other one by two. It's just that zero divided by two is the same as zero. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's the only secret for midpoint is add the two coordinates and divide by two. Okay. Okay. This is similar to what we've spend some time on already today. Uh, let's just do A, B, and B, C. What's the slope on A, B? So for A, B, you'd do um, A, B, so that would be A, B equals 4 minus 2 and then 3 minus 1, what would that be? 2 over 2. And then that equals 1. Okay, and what's the slope on BC? So BC is negative 2 minus 4, and then 6 minus 3. So negative 2 minus 4. That is negative six and then three. And then would you simplify that even more? Uh-huh. So that would be negative two. Right. In other words, if a number can be simplified, then you need to simplify it. This okay. is this is never a correct answer. You would always lose points on any math test if you put 6 okay. over 3. So always simplify. Now, what's the relationship between AB and BC? Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Um, I would say neither. Good. Okay, AC and BD are two completely different lines. Eh, let's do those two. You, you can't hardly get enough practice on slopes. That's how important slopes are throughout math, right up to calculus. What is the slope of AC? So 
negative 2 minus 2 and 6 minus 1. So negative 2 minus 2. What is that? Three, 4. No, negative 4. And then 5. So. Okay. And that's as simplified as we can get. In other words, we cannot find a number that divides both into the top and the bottom. Yeah. Whereas the other time we had 6 over 3, I could divide the top by 3 and I could divide the bottom by 3. So that's how you make sure you simplify it. Um, now let's look at BD. Okay, so for BD that would be negative 1 minus 4 and then negative 1 minus 3, so that would be negative 5 over negative 4. Is there a, okay, number, and then, a number that I can divide top and bottom by? Um, 1? Negative 1. Okay, so then that would get you positive 5 over positive 4. Now what is the relationship between those two lines? Um, perpendicular? Perfect. In other words, okay. you had to do two things to turn that into that. You had to flip it and you had to change its sign. Yeah. Always remember that for perpendicularity you have to do two things. In other words, if that was a minus 5 fourths, it would not be perpendicular. Mm hmm Okay. All right. I, I think you really do get it on perpendicularity. Uh, let's look at this trapezoid here. What's this line called? Uh, the mid-segment. <laughs> okay. What is true about the mid-segment of a trapezoid? Um, that it is halfway. It's the average of the two bases. Okay. This being one base, that being another base, it's the base that's in the middle. It's the middle, it's like the midpoint between 34 and 40. Well, how am I going to get the midpoint between 34 and 40? What's the rule? Um... Don't you add them together? And? Divide by 2. Yes. That's a critical okay. part of it. You don't just add them together. That would give you 74. There's no way that could be 74. But when okay. you divide by 2, what do you get? 37. And that is halfway between 34 and 40. Okay. That's what so you're then, for. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily, in other words, you could probably figure that out yourself, right? The 37 was the number that's halfway between 34 and 40. But it's not always that easy. In other words, some of these numbers are such that always remember that you add the numbers and divide by 2 to get the average. Okay. Okay. So if 37, what's X going to be equal to? Um, 35. No. X no, 34. <laughs> yeah, because x plus 3 is equal to 37. x has to be 34. Okay. Mm, let's talk about 8. Reflect, okay. Reflecting points. First of all, when they say, usually most reflections are going to be about either the x-axis or the y-axis. Yeah. So if so, I had a point there that was 3, 4, and I reflected it about the x-axis, what's going to be the coordinates of it? Um, they become negatives, but... So look at it. Try to figure out what these coordinates would be. The sign might change, but the numbers aren't going to change. 
Okay, so wouldn't you flip them? So no, look at it. Which what's the x coordinate on that? Is it positive or negative? It's positive. Okay, what's the y coordinate on it? Positive or negative? Um, positive. No, it's below the x axis. Oh, so it'd be negative. So that's what happens when you reflect over the x-axis, is all you do okay. is change the sign on the y-coordinate. Okay? Now, okay. let's flip over the x, or excuse me, let's flip over the y-axis. Again, the numbers aren't going to change, only the signs. What's the x going to be? Positive or negative? So, reflecting across the y-axis, um, the re would become negative. Is the y and positive then, or negative? Uh, it stays a positive. So it's pretty easy to reflect points over the x-axis or the y-axis. Yeah. Okay. What's kind of hard is reflecting it over the line y equal x. Well, the line y equal x is this line right here. Notice that it's a line that has a slope of 1 and goes through, has a y-intercept of 0. In other words, it's still in y equal mx plus b format. It's just that b is 0 and m is 1. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's so this line. Now, this is a little tricky. I'm going to teach this to you the way I teach it to everybody. Um, forget these three points for a moment. Okay. Let me give you this point right here. That point is 1 comma 5. Okay? If I reflect okay. that point across that line, then it has to end up about there, right? In other words, you just draw mm -hmm. a perpendicular to the line and you go an equal amount of distance so that this measurement is the same as that measurement. And they're both perpendicular. Okay? okay? Now, if I told you that the numbers don't change, only the signs might change. And maybe the signs don't even change. Maybe the numbers just get reversed. What would be the coordinates on this point? Well, if they're reversed, then 5 would become x and 1 would become y. That's our only possibility, right? I mean, yeah. it's not negative. It's clearly above the x-axis, and it's to the right of the y-axis. So the only thing I can do here is switch the numbers. With all of these reflections, understand that the numbers never change. They either get switched or they change signs. Okay. Okay. In this case, is all they did was switch. Let's take another number. Let's take a number 1, 3. 1, 3. And is all we have to do is approximate its location to solve what we're doing. Well, if I reflect that point, it is about there. You see why? Yeah. What's the coordinates on that point have to be? Um, it would be 3, comma 1. Yeah. So, in other words, when we reflect any of these three points across that line, is all we do is change their the x and the y coordinate. So, a prime becomes 5, comma 6. B prime becomes 8, comma 3. And C prime becomes what? Um, 8, comma 6. And then 1, 1, 
Negative two? Would it stay in negative? One comma negative two. Okay. Don't forget the comma. Yeah. In other words, we're not changing signs. When I moved one three to three one, I didn't change any signs. So all I did was switch the X and Y coordinates. Okay. So it it depends on what you're reflecting about. Now, there's all kinds of ways to do this. There's reflecting about the x-axis. There's reflecting about the y-axis. There's reflecting about the line y equal x. There's rotation of 90 degrees. There's a rotation of 180 degrees. There's a rotation of 270. So there's lots of different things you can do. And you have a couple of choices. You can memorize the algebra or... You can do it the way I do it, which is to make up a point and see where it ends up and know that these numbers aren't going to change. They're either going to switch or they're going to change signs. Well, okay. you can see from this example that they don't change signs. That's positive for the X and the Y, and that's got to be positive. In other words, looking at that point, I know that the X and Y have to both be positive. So the only possible answer can be 3, 1. Okay. Okay. Now, even if I have a negative, let me put a point right here where it's going to be hard for you to see. In other words, it's a little bit difficult if these points are close together. 4 and 3 are close together. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I know that if I reflect it, it has to be about right here, right? In other words, you yeah. know how to reflect over that line. You draw a line perpendicular to the line. You keep going an equal distance. Actually, I put it in the wrong spot. It goes about right here. Okay. Now... Knowing what we just learned, what do this does this have to be? Mm, if we're reflecting it, so three becomes x. No, 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 no. Where there's no x's and y. Well, okay, I see what you meant. Okay, yes. The x coordinate is three. Yeah. What's and the then comma negative four. Right. In other words, even though we weren't sure whether this might not be four comma negative three, we learned from the previous problem that is all you do is switch the x and y coordinates. Okay. That makes okay. Sense. So. If you're reflecting over y equals x, just switch the x and y coordinates, and that will answer it for you, regardless of whether these numbers are close together. Because when they're close together, like 3 and 4 are, it's kind of difficult to tell whether this should be 4 comma minus 3 or 3 comma minus 4. Okay. Now, notice that if the numbers were far apart, let's say minus 1, comma 5. Okay? Let's say that's our number. Okay. 1 and 5 are far apart. That's going to help me in figuring it out because I know that that's going to end up right about there, right? Yeah. Now, what is? what are those coordinates? Um, 5, comma, negative 1. And we're certain about it, right? Because we can yeah. tell that, yeah, that's, that's 5, comma, negative 1. There's no way that can be anything but that. Yeah. So these problems are a little bit easier when the numbers are far apart. In other words, it would be easier to do that one than it would be to do that one. Okay. Because visually, you're not going to be certain with that one. In other words, it, let's say you forget the rule. You go into the test and you're not sure what's the rule when I reflect across the line y equal x. 
Well, if you try a point like minus 1 comma 5, that will tell you what the rule is. Okay. Because I know that that goes there. I can draw it. And I know that the numbers don't change, only they either switch or we got to switch signs. Well, I know the X is positive and the Y is negative, so it has to be 5 comma negative 1. So it's always a little easier to do these kind of problems when the two numbers are further apart. In other words, okay. not 3 comma 4 or 2 comma 3, but 1 comma 5 are far enough apart that it puts it closer to one axis than the other. And then yeah. if you reflect it, it stays closer. It stay, and this one is closer to the X axis than it is the Y axis. So it's much easier to read the graph. All right, enough of that. I don't want to waste our entire session on that. How about number <laughs> nine? This is, okay. This is a pretty good problem. Have you done nine before? Um, I've seen problems like it, but... Okay. They want you to solve for these four angles down here. Now, with all geometry problems, you should know that you can never solve for anything in one step. That's just not the, what they're going to give you on a test. They're either going to make you do two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps, whatever. <coughs> but there's no way I'm going to get A in one step or any of these. Yeah. So I've got to solve for other stuff first. How am I going to solve for A? So, for A, why don't you have to start by solving the other? Yeah, what's that angle going to be right there? That is so, what they tell you. Well, they don't tell it to you, but, well, they show it to you. They show you that I have a pentagon with five equal angles. That's what those hash marks mean. Each of those angles is equal. So that makes that a regular pentagon. Five, yeah. five sides. So we have to figure out what that angle is. Once we figure okay. out what that angle is, well, that's linear, that's supplemental with A, we'll know A then. Okay, so. Let's figure out what that angle right there is. Wouldn't you do the N minus two times 180 to get that? That's going to give you the sum of the five angles. What is that going to be? So that's going to be three times 180. That is 540, and then you divide 540 by five. 108. That, yeah. So those, so all those angles. Each of those, 108. Okay, what does that make A? Um, so, wouldn't it be 72? Correct, because it's a linear pair, which yeah. means they're supplemental. Supplemental means they add to 180, so 72 would add to 108 to be equal to 180. So we have A, okay? okay? Now we're going to do exactly the same process for F. We have to figure out what that angle is. Okay, so then what, you do... What's the sum? That's an octagon. There's eight sides. So eight minus two is six, and then six times 180 is 1,080, and then you divide that by eight, and you get 135. Okay. So this angle is 135. What's F? So 180 minus 135 is 45. Okay. So we got A and we got F. Okay. We can't solve for H until we solve for G. Yeah. What's G? This, well, what was this angle? 108? Yeah. What's this angle? 135? Mm-hmm. What's G? What's the sum? So, What's the sum of those three angles? 
Okay, so. What's the sum of those three angles? Well, if you take 135 plus 135, you get 243 if you add 135 and 108. But okay, So we have to know what the sum of the three angles is to solve this. Yeah. What is the sum of the three angles around any point? In other words, if I have something like this, and I have angle 1, 2, 3, and 4, what's the sum of those four angles have to be? Wouldn't it have to be 360? You got it. Oh, okay. So. No matter how many angles there are, I can have another one there, another one there, another one there. The sum of all of those angles has to be 360. Always. So that would be 117. Okay, so that's G. Now we have A, F, and G. How can we get H? So you can take all those, you can take those three numbers, add them together, and subtract it by 360. Perfect. Okay, so that would be. And that is 126. Okay. I didn't check your math, but the important part is you understand how to do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it looks like you did. So that's how you solve those kind of problems. Notice that you always have to solve for something else first. You're yeah. never, never going to be able to solve for any of these in one step. And in okay. fact, I would venture to say that no matter what geometry problem you have, you're never going to be able to solve in one step. You're going to have to solve something else first. That's just the nature of geometry problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Ken... Kendall, I admire your effort. Uh, I hope it pays off for you in your exam. And, Thank you. <laughs> have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll probably talk to you next year. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.